Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I'm Bill Maley, Brighton Town Supervisor. I'm pleased to have everybody here at our March 27th, 2024 meeting of the Brighton Town Board. Uh, in just a couple of minutes, we will be uh, beginning the open forum portion of the meeting. Open forum is the opportunity for members of the community to share your comments, your questions with the town board, and we'll get into that a little in a little bit more detail shortly. Um, as you know, we not only uh, welcome our live audience, but we also uh, live stream our meetings on YouTube, on Zoom, and on the Brighton Cable Access Channel. Now, if you're watching remotely in any other um, medium other than Zoom, you can do that, but you won't be able to participate in the open forum or later in the public hearing that we have tonight. If you want to participate in the meeting, and we welcome you to do so, uh, please log in to our Zoom meeting, and instructions for doing that are available on the town's webpage. That's www.townofbrighton.org, and we welcome you to do that. Uh, we also welcome our, our deaf and hard of hearing community um, to be able to participate in this meeting. For years, we have had ASL interpreters at all of our meeting, and generally, Allie and Heather uh, do that job, and we appreciate having them here again tonight. Uh, if you're interested in our agenda, I was just talking with uh, someone about uh, tonight's agenda and how the agenda works. The agenda is available on the back table, along with all of the materials that we consider in, uh, you know, in taking action on the items listed in the agenda. All of those same items are available as well on the town's webpage. Again, www.townofbrighton.org. Um, you go to uh, a link for agendas and minutes, and you will find the agenda there. Now, tonight in the front row, we have some special guests. Um, before the meeting, I had the chance to meet with scouts and their volunteer leaders from Troop 77 from uh, First Baptist Church. We have uh, some scouts who go to 12 Corners Middle School and some who go to the high school. Um, they're all working on the Citizenship in the Community Merit Badge, and it's a great uh, pleasure to get to talk to them, to talk to them about some of the things we do in Brighton, how a town board meeting works, and they're going to sit in and uh, join us uh, in that. It's part of their requirement for earning that Merit Badge. Um, uh, Mark Martin and the other um, leaders, you, you do a great job. You help us in a number of ways uh, at some of our patriotic ceremonies out at the uh, Brighton Veterans Memorial, and we really do appreciate that. So tonight they're going to see uh, how local government works uh, up close and personal. We talked about how important local government is. You know, the, 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 everybody focuses on maybe state government. And these, these guys are well prepared. They know who the governor is. They know who the mayor is. Obviously, we all know who the president is. But we talked about how, you know, you're probably not going to see the, 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 the governor or the president when you go grocery shopping. You might see your town supervisor, or you might see one of your board members. That's the difference between local government. Sometimes people s sort of don't focus on local government as much. Those higher levels are, are there. That's what you see on the evening news. That's what you see on your Twitter feed or X feed or whatever they call it these days. <laughs> but local government, and, and, and we're going to go around the room in just a moment so everybody knows who everybody is here. Local government, though, is what affects people's lives in some ways the most immediately. When you wake up in the morning and it's been snowing, local government is responsible for getting Elmwood Avenue and all the other streets plowed and the sidewalks plowed. Um, if there's a law enforcement issue in this community, the Brighton Police Department is the one that you, you turn to. If you need a dog license, the town clerk's office. So you engage as residents of the town of Brighton with local government in a way that you may never ever engage 
in such a direct face-to-face -face way with uh, higher levels of government. So we're really pleased to have the scouts here tonight. Um, they're gonna be participating in this meeting. I'm gonna ask everyone that is able to please rise and I'm gonna ask the scouts from Troop 77 to lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. Go ahead, gentlemen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we are. I'm going to go around the table real quickly. So you've, you've got name plates, most everybody, but um, starting with you, Chief Dave Capaldi. I'm James Sprague, I'm the Commissioner of Public Works. Uh, John Mancuso, I'm the Attorney for the Town. I'm Christine Corrado, I'm a Council Member. Chris Werner, Member of the Town Board. Bill Maley, Town Supervisor. Robin Hill, Council Member. Nate Salzman, Council Member. Dan Amon, Town Clerk and Receiver of Taxes. Sure. No? <laughs> okay. We have a stenographer, and the reason we have a stenographer is because we have a public hearing later tonight, and it's important that there be a record of what everybody says at that public hearing. So, um, we will now begin the open forum. I talked with the scouts a little bit about how the open forum works. Not only do we welcome the public to attend our meetings, but we welcome the public to participate in our meetings, and we do that through the open forum. It's an opportunity for members of the public to address the board concerning any matter relating to the town, um, whether or not it's a matter that's actually on our agenda this evening. Now, if you wish to speak during the open forum, I'll ask you to raise your hand, and I'll call on you and recognize you. I'll ask you to come up to the podium please state your name and address. If you are participating um, remotely and you're on Zoom and would like to participate in the open forum from the Zoom platform, um, once we finish with the people in the room, I'll then move to people on Zoom. Um, I will ask uh, anybody that wants to participate remotely on Zoom to use the raised hand uh, Zoom function and you will be unmuted and you'll have a chance to uh, participate. Uh, as I mentioned, when you come up to the podium or when you speak uh, remotely, I would ask that you state your name and address, please. Uh, please limit your remarks to three minutes uh, and I'll give everybody a 30 second warning before your time expires. Now. We may not, if you have questions, we may not be able to answer your questions, um, particularly uh, if they relate to matters that are not on the agenda this evening. But our goal tonight and during the town board uh, open forum that we hold at every town board meeting, it's an opportunity for you to share your thoughts with the board and for us to be able to listen. So I'm gonna ask that everyone please direct remarks during the open forum to the town board and not to the room, to other speakers, please direct your remarks to us, the town board. I'm gonna ask everyone to refrain from personal attacks of any kind out of respect for the speakers here. I'm gonna ask that you refrain from outbursts of any kind, clapping, yelling, hooting and hollering, whatever. Please don't do it. We want everybody to have respect in this room and have the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm confident you'll follow those rules. If you don't, we'll let you know that there is a problem. We will ask you to stick to the rules. Remember, we got scouts in the room. Remember, you're modeling behavior tonight. Sometimes scouts behave better than adults. Um, but. Please do follow those rules, and if you don't, um, you may be asked to wrap up your remarks or even leave the room. So I'm confident we won't have to do that, but please do um, act accordingly. 
So the open forum is now open. Is there anyone that would like to address the board during the open forum? Aaron. Aaron Rhina, 62 Poplar Way. Um, I like to start my commentary usually recognizing people that I think have done a great job in the town, and I'd like to thank Chief Cathaldi for probably the fifth time that I've spoken in the open forum. Constantly accessible, gives great feedback and um, great advice in terms of, of how to interact with neighbors when there's needs. And 25 years with the town of Brighton Twenty. just about two weeks ago. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the reason I came tonight is this. Uh, I lead the Evans Farm Neighborhood Association, and it's no stranger to anybody in this room or on the board that I've been here to talk about safety and traffic for pretty much the entire duration of that, that tenure. Um, recently, I've had a number of neighbors approach me to even try and start petitions for areas outside of our neighborhood regarding traffic, and I find this very odd, and I wanted to bring it to your attention. There's a lot of uh, recent conversation about traffic patterns and uh, people blowing through the pedestrian light in front of the high school on Winton Road. It's more prevalent recently, and this goes back a couple of months. Um, it seems that maybe there's some question about uh, the crosswalks or whether or not the crosswalks are tended to. I'm not sure what the details are, but it's important that the road be looked at and that the safety of the road be looked at. I'm pretty sure it's a 15 mile an hour zone being outside of a school. Uh, that coupled with uh, different activities that have taken place within the parameter of the building, and I am a parent of a student at TCMS, concerns me. It's a time of year where things are about to get heated politically, and I can say that with assuredness that a number of us sit in a room and talk about politics every month that is not this room. So you're all very well aware of that, and we argue enough with ourselves, let alone to think about what could happen uh, when there are protests where somebody who's not part of that understanding gets too heated and drives through a child, a protester, somebody trying to cross the road. So I really want all of us to just think of our better selves and figure out how we can do this and how we can move forward with both the traffic and freedom of speech within that little area that is so essential to where our kids get educated. So again, I'm just here tonight as a neighborhood leader saying I'm hearing a lot of noise from my neighbors about both of those things, but they both relate to safety and security of the kids in those buildings and as well as drop off and the parents. Um, so please, if, if you give it a little bit of attention, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Yes. Isaiah 62 one for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. Can you I, please, can you please uh, state your name and address? Bob Gluck, 50 Dunbarton Drive. I have been a Brighton resident for 31 years. For nearly three decades, I had no desire or need to walk into this building, this room, and for that matter, to stand and speak into this microphone. The only time I came into this venue was to hand Dan my exorbitant t tax payments. That all changed for me in the spring of 2021 when a current board member posted a picture on Facebook besides the infamous Jew hater, Linda Sarsour. Yes, Linda Sarsour, the same Jew hater that has touted her connections with Louis Farrakhan, the man who has amplified Jew hatred by calling Jews both bloodsuckers and termites. Mr. Gluck, this I'm going to ask that your comments not be personal in nature directed, if you would direct them to the entire town board. This, this board member proudly posted on Facebook referring to Sarsour. Those who know her know who, what this post means. It's day eight of the conflict, hashtag free Palestine. This coincided with the terrorist organization Hamas raining thousands of rockets on innocent civilians. For an encore, this board member then participated at an anti-Israel rally where she stood and clapped in her support of chants like down, down with Israel. She also applauded every anti-hate-filled speech that was spoken that day. 
On June 22nd, 2021, within minutes of winning the Democrat primary for Brighton Town Board, she engaged in a rousing chant of free, free Palestine. Mr. Gluck, I'm gonna ask you not to personalize, not to direct comments in the way that you're directing them. If you have an issue that is more general, we welcome that, but as, as I indicated before, we, we, I, w I would ask that you not make personal attacks. This is not X, this is a meeting of the Brighton Town Board. I know where I'm at, I have free speech, this is not a personal attack, Consequently, as a proud Zionist, I attended several board meetings to strongly voice my opposition to this anti-Israel board member. When I felt I had said everything that I needed to say, I went about my business, and I have not been back here until this evening. I read the despicable anti-Semitic letter to the Monroe County Legislature and viewed the accompanying vile cartoon. Any reasonable person would have condemned it. Thank you, Supervisor Melee, for publicly stating, and I quote, on behalf of elected officials in Brighton, we do condemn the statement and the image as hateful, misogynistic, and anti-Semitic. Thank you, Council Members Werner, Carada, Carrado, and Salzman for endorsing this statement. Thank you, Dan. However, the same board member that I referred to earlier did not sign, so Ms. Wilt, were you presented with this statement prior to its publication and public release? Were you given ample opportunity to sign like your colleagues? If you don't answer, then I will personally take liberty to answer the question for you. Time. You didn't sign it because you perfectly align with the author. Sir, is there anyone else that would like to address the town board during the open forum? Mr. Dollinger. It's been a long time. My name is Richard Dollinger. I live at 2795 East Avenue. I first spoke to this town board uh, before the chief was hired by the town in 1987. I've lived in this community for my entire life. Uh, I'm here today because I'm concerned about the boiling temperatures in this, uh, uh, in this town. And I'm concerned, I think the last speaker perhaps uh, gave a demonstration of that, that we have suddenly seemed to be falling into the idea of personal attacks and criticism in what should be a robust political discussion about our future and the issues that affect us. I'm here today because I'm concerned about uh, the protests and to the effect that protests can interfere with either education or safety of our children. And my only suggestion is that the town board ought to consider, I leave it up to your wisdom, as to whether reasonable time and place restrictions can be placed on protests so that they don't interfere with children going to school and with the, conduct, the conduct of what happens in our schools. We happen to have a school building that's right in the center of town, right at the focal point of our community. And it just seems to me that if we're going to send a message to our children about civil discourse, about respect for other people's opinions, about the ability to debate the contentious issues that affect not only this town but the broader world, it seems to me that we can do that in a civil, respectful way in which we recognize our dignities. And I would simply suggest that we can do that with some restriction. You don't have to ban free speech but I believe you could put reasonable time and place restrictions that would allow these protests to occur whatever manner they occur, collective bargaining, whatever the issue is. It just seems to me that turning the temperature down and having a civil discourse about incredibly difficult issues would be to the advantage and would quite frankly reaffirm my belief, which I believe is shared by members of the town board, of the community of Brighton as one that respects everyone's integrity and everyone's right to be heard. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor, and thank you to all of you for your work. Thank you. Is there anyone? Yes, sir. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Paul Sanders, and I live on Fair Meadow Drive. I have a child at TCMS, same school as uh, some of our guests today. And 
I'm going to keep this brief because you all you know all the facts. Uh, but I urge this board to regulate the protests at our school in line with what Mr. Dollinger just spoke about. Um, this can be done in a reasonable First Amendment compliant manner, just like many, many, many other jurisdictions throughout the state and throughout this country. Okay, and now we all know, we all know that our children are being targeted, specifically by aggressive political activists because of their perceived religion, okay? We know this. We know that children in Webster, Irondequoit, Penfield, they're not being targeted because they are perceived to be of a different religion than the students in Brighton. We know these protests in February got violent within tens of meters of our school, of our children, of my child. We all saw footage of a protester kicking a man in the head as hard as he could, a man who was already down on the ground, fracturing his skull. Frankly, I don't care why he did it. I don't care whose fault it is. I don't care who started it. What I care about is that this violence is happening around my kid. And I, you know, uh, I, I think you've heard all about what happened at these protests, and I'll keep it brief. I understand that there's a a very disturbed protester who's frequently near the school, screaming at passersby, asking them how many children they murdered that day. And apparently this is, you know, completely acceptable to the other protesters who, are, who carry mutilated body parts, have pictures of dead children that they're displaying to our children, my child. And this is just a small sampling of what goes on at those protests. Okay, I'm going to edit everything else out and you know about it anyways. So if there is even a 1% chance that even one child is harmed by these unregulated protests, which again are specifically designed to harass Brighton children and only Brighton children, no other children in any other town, just Brighton children, this board must act. Just ask yourself, who are we? Are, are we the kind of community that protects our children from violence and harassment? Or are we the kind of community who cowers in fear from political radicals, most of which don't even live in Brighton, who are seeking to harass, humiliate, and scare our children in our community? 30 seconds. Only your action or inaction will answer that question. And I just want to close with, you know, some of you may think this will blow over because it's a heated issue and you've been getting heat from all sides. But these are our children we're talking about. Do not underestimate the depth of our anger and determination. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the room that would like to address the board during the open forum? Then I'll turn to Zoom. Uh, if there is anyone on the Zoom feed that would like to address the board, uh, I would ask you to raise your hand. I see uh, one hand raised. Um, it is Alexi, and I will ask that Alexi be unmuted and given the opportunity to speak. Um, if, uh, again, the three-minute um, uh, time frame, um, um, Go ahead, Mr. Tetanoff. Hi. Um, so I, I heard the previous speaker talk about um, reasonable restrictions on the First Amendment, uh, freedom of expression, freedom of petition, freedom to re seek redress for your grievances. Uh, in that same vein, uh, how about we make reasonable regulations on the uh, freedom of religion? Maybe during the day, or dur during uh, from dawn from dawn to dusk, have uh, no religious symbol uh, appear on anybody's clothing or visible in public. Wouldn't that be another ridiculous uh, regulation to try to pursue? Uh, I'm not in favor of any restrictions. If it's no longer a right, if you need to seek a permission slip, a magical permission slip from our great how father, Bill, to see if you're worthy of being allowed to express yourself peacefully in public. This, this uh, fascination with trying to restrict a right 
into some sort of uh, with some sort of uh, magical uh, uh, a person that has these magical powers to determine this person is worthy and this other person is not worthy is ridiculous. Yeah. Freedom is scary. Learn to deal with it. You feel right and uh, uh, where another person begins. Uh, this this, this uh, nonsense of trying to restrict somebody's freedom is, is beyond ridiculous. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Mr. Tatanoff. Um, I see one Yes, user, if, if that thank you, I was going to ask if they be admitted. Um, is there anyone else on the Zoom that would like to address the town board during the open forum? If so, please use the raised hand feature on Zoom. Is there anyone here in the room that would like to address the town board during the open forum? Bill, if Hearing we have no one else, I uh, move you, to approve the agenda. Second. Um, no, we haven't gotten anything uh, given to us in writing. Uh, any discussion? Dan, please call the roll. Councilmember Werner? Aye. Councilmember Wilt? Aye. Councilmember Corrado? Aye. Councilmember Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Manley? I, um, before we, uh, before we go to the public hearing tonight, I, I do want to thank everybody that spoke tonight. I want to thank the people that spoke at our previous, uh, meetings and who have communicated, um, their thoughts, uh, recently with respect to public safety and the expressions of free speech in the 12 Corners Park. Uh, I am particularly appreciative of the thoughtful communication we will be receiving and filing later this evening from Rabbi Peter Stein, senior rabbi at Temple Brith Kodesh. Um, we take very seriously um, the concerns that are being raised um, when they're being raised in a, in, a, in, a, in a thoughtful manner. We recognize the seriousness of your concern and we take them seriously. Um, Earlier this week, the town board met with the uh, attorney to the town to discuss the issues raised um, by um, what we've heard and con concerns about um, uh, the uh, demonstrations that were held in the 12 Corners Park in the context of the First Amendment. We will continue to listen to your input um, we will also continue to um, work with, listen to, and analyze the advice, uh, legal advice from counsel as it relates to these issues before any decisions are made. But again, I do encourage everyone in the community um, to heed the calming words. Dr. McGowan gave some thoughtful remarks. Rabbi Stein includes some thoughtful remarks in his statement tonight. We heard from some others with uh, remarks. And, and, and maybe again, we've got some scouts here in the room tonight. Let's model our behavior on some of the lessons that scouts learn. And let's be good, respectful adults. This is an extraordinary community. People don't realize necessarily what an amazing community Brighton is in its diversity in diversity in so many different ways. And that diversity has been one of our great strengths. It is one of the things that brings people to Brighton. It's important that that continue to be what brings people to this great community. And, and I hope we will all together work in that direction to continue to make Brighton a community we can all be proud of. Um, we're gonna move on next to, we have one public hearing tonight. Um, it's going to sound a little bit like a broken record, but this is the continuation of the hearing on the incentive zoning proposal for a Top Golf sports and entertainment facility proposed to be located near the corner of East Henrietta Road and Westfall Road. That matter was tabled at our last meeting 
Can I have a motion to remove that matter from the table and reopen the public hearing? Can I have a motion, please? I move that we remove that matter from the table and reopen the public hearing. Second. Um, thank you. Um, Dan, please call the roll on that motion. Councilmember Werner? Aye. Councilmember Wilt? Aye. Councilmember Corrado? Aye. Councilmember Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Mailey? Aye. Um, I declare that public hearing then to be reopened. Um, I'll just, just a couple things. Um, you may recall two weeks ago we had hoped to have sufficient information by now to be able to make a de determination of significance of this proposal and complete the seeker review process for that application. Um, there are still a couple of items uh, that are relevant to our environmental review that we are awaiting um, from the developer. We expect to receive that information, we hope anyway, uh, by the start of next week. So while we have opened the public hearing and we will again receive input on um, the public hearing, if there's anyone either here in the room or on Zoom that wants to speak, I'm gonna ask that we again hold the public hearing open. We'll table it at the end and um, with the expectation we'll open it again in two weeks. At that time, I hope and expect we'll be able to close the public hearing and at the very least then take action on um, the environmental determination as required by SEEKER, the State Environmental Quality Review Act, uh, and whether we take action on the actual project at that meeting or probably more likely wait for two weeks to do so. But that's sort of a roadmap going forward. John, anything else you wanna? Uh, nothing further, Supervisor, that was uh, uh, accurate. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the room that would like to address the board on the proposed Top Golf incentive zoning project? Is there anyone on Zoom that would like to address the board um, on the proposed Top Golf sports entertainment process? And again, I'll note for those of you that may be watching remotely on YouTube or otherwise, but not on Zoom. If you would like to participate in this public hearing, we welcome your input, but we would ask that you join the Zoom meeting, which will give you the opportunity to interact with us. Instructions for that are on the town's webpage. I don't see anybody. Um, again, you can use the raised hand function on Zoom. I don't see anybody. Uh, is there anybody here in the room tonight that would like to address the town board on the public hearing on the Top Golf proposal. Hearing none, then can I have a motion to uh, table the public hearing until our next meeting on April 10th? I move that we table the uh, public hearing on the proposed incentive zoning uh, application for Top Golf until April. 10th. Until April 10th. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll. Councilmember Werner? Aye. Councilmember Wilt? Aye. Councilmember Corrado? Aye. Councilmember Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Mailey? Aye. So that public hearing will be reopened, uh, taken off the table on April 10th. Next are communications. We have four items of communication on tonight's agenda. Um, first is one I really enjoy. Uh, it is communication from uh, Jerry Geist, uh, who is the chair, and Mike Keneally, who is the executive director of Comp Alliance. Comp Alliance is a municipal consortium. At our last meeting uh, two weeks ago, I talked about some of the ways that we work in collaboration with other municipalities to save money for the town. Uh, the Comp Alliance is one of those. The Comp Alliance uh, provides workers' compensation insurance to municipalities. Um, it is made up of various municipalities uh, throughout the state, and it has been a vehicle to make sure that workers' compensation coverage is available for communities like Brighton at a cost that's affordable. 
Um, we have been a member of that program for, um, well, well over 20 years at this point. And uh, under the loyalty program that the Comp Alliance has, um, based on their success in insuring us, they have sent us a check for $2,726. And uh, we appreciate that. That will help in a small way reduce our insurance costs um, for the town. So that's the first communication. The second communication is from Heverin and Company uh, attached to the financial statements for Brighton Volunteer Ambulance. Of course, Brighton Volunteer Ambulance provides ambulance service to the Brighton community through the Brighton uh, Special Ambulance uh, District. And we appreciate the fact that under the terms of that contract, they do provide us their financial statements. We also have a communication that I referenced earlier from Rabbi Peter Stein, senior rabbi at Temple Brith Kodesh, um, addressing uh, issues relating to the recent um, demonstrations in the 12 Corners Park. We also have a communication uh, just uh, received today from Julie Gelfand, also discussing um, the um, demonstrations in the 12 Corners Park and specifically a petition on change.org relating thereto. Uh, can I have a motion to receive and file those communications? I move that we receive and file the communications. Robin, I'll there? second. Nate? Discussion? Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll on the motion to receive and file those communications. Councilmember Werner? Aye. Councilmember Wilt? Aye. Councilmember Carrado? Aye. Councilmember Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Malley? Aye. Next, we move to committee reports, uh, community services. Robin. Thank you, Bill. The Community Services Committee met last Wednesday, March 24th, or 20th, excuse me. Among the items we discussed were uh, one item of communication. Um, it was a March 6th, 2024 email from Bill Brower, who is a member of the Sustainability Oversight Committee regarding Safe, Street for, Safe Streets for All grants. Um, we did uh, move that discussion to the Public Works Committee. Under items of continuing business, park issues, staff are managing the warm weather having created a demand for off-seasonal use of fields and facilities. In anticipation of the spring athletic season, Matt Beeman has met with the new athletic director at the high school, Mark Press, regarding school and community demands for field usage and how all needs will be met. Eclipse planning is in full swing and coordination in preparation for this community event is occupying a considerable amount of staff efforts, of course. Um, the Parks Department will assume mowing responsibilities at the Winter Farmers Market location, prompting an evaluation of the placement of boulders intended to curb illicit parking and possible alternative solutions that better align with maintenance and mowing needs. There is also a discussion of the potential for an access path at Persimmon Park, given the change in ownership of the property at the edge of, end of Eldridge. Um, we will await a specific proposal from interested parties. In update to our recreation programs, we began registration of a supplemental after school program, um, which included 20 spaces at the Brookside School Rec Brighton Recreation location this week, and it has been in high demand. Over 20 new families were processed, and indicating that there is a need for increased flexible, high quality, and affordable childcare in the community. Summer playground camp registration began on March 26 for residents. Uh, Council Rock, French Road, and TCMS locations are set to host age appropriate programming. Strong con a strong contingent of returning staff is uh, coming back to the program, and um, non registration for the program will open on May 14th. We also had a uh, review of our wildly successful Brickyard Trail Art Exhibition. Thank you to members of the community for taking part and all of the artists, of course. Um, I, I think it was a very successful event, so thank you. Um, 
and we also had a preview of our Brickyard Bunny Trail Eclipse Scavenger Hunt that opened last Friday, March 22nd, and continues. So please take part in that. Details are available online. Um, we had an update on our Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity Advisory Board. We had a very well-attended Black History Month celebration. The IDEA Board did forego their meeting at the same time to celebrate the Black, Black History Month um, event. In the future, there will be greater, event, er, greater effort to, made to deconflict the celebration and meeting times. Women's History Month celebration will involve community leaders uh, and a questionnaire. Um, AAPI, or Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, will be recognized and designated community members will coordinate the efforts. Uh, we will ensure that voices of transnational and transracial adoption community are included this year. Uh, we will revisit farmers market programming and coordinate with Sue Gardner Smith because of its popularity and in an effort to enhance the town and brighten BPD's uh, commitment to community policing stakeholder community liaisons will be engaging target communities to discuss public safety concerns specific to those communities. And up to, to our clean energy community priority actions and sustainability funds, uh, the clean energy community program has been totally revamped of late involving larger awards that will enable implementation of bigger sustainability projects Implementation of new solar sustainability projects are likely to lift the town from its current 5,000 point grant eligibility level to the 7,000 point grant eligibility level. We also discussed our energy um, efficiency and conservation block grant funding application that was, uh, whose focus was approved by the town board at its March 13th meeting and we'll focus on zoning code updates for commercial areas. We had an update to uh, the pollinator pathway challenge um, that will, the programming that will be implemented. The conservation board is reviewing website content and application form for resident participants. Signs are being developed to recognize participants and um, this will be done um, by, on a community, by community basis and the county is providing informational resources to all the towns that are participating. We've had an update to our Town of Brighton annual clean sweep and recycling events. Uh, clean sweep will occur on Saturday, May 18th. Monetary and in-kind sponsorships have started to come in. We're still looking for a vendor to help subsidize our lunch for clean sweep and um, all of our recycling events uh, have been transitioned to June 1st. In new business, we had our Brighton Farmers Market 2023 annual report delivered by Sue Gardner-Smith, the director of the um, Farmers Market. Mm, there are additional funds remaining in, from the grant that, have, that funded the development of the Winter Farmers Market that will, will be used to expand the parking for current w winter market and to support the summer market during it, the anticipated construction at Brighton High School. The Farmers Market will return to outdoor function on April 21st. It appears that there were record crowds this past year in 2023 with positive feedback garnered from all stakeholders. Community celebrations saw the market recognize Juneteenth, Pride, Hispanic His Heritage Month, and Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Specific groups have provided feedback that they would like to, the format to um, be more, more encompassing of celebratory performances and maybe a bit fewer speeches. Um, we are continuing the discussion. I with vote aye on that. <laughs> 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 uh, we are continuing the discussion regarding collaboration with the IDEA Board and, um, and having more diversity events implemented at the market. And I just wanted to give all due credit to Becky Car Cotter, the our recreation director and de facto manager of the indoor market for coordinating the transition 
from the outdoor market to the new winter farmers market location. Um, she did that with great APOM. Um, the big challenge on the horizon for the market is the reconstruction of the Brighton High School parking lot in the summer of 2025. Overall, the opening of the winter market barn engendered feedback that is overwhelmingly positive. There were a few concerns with parking and the gravel connecting um, walkway from, from the lower parking lot to the upper parking lot and its attendant accessibility issues. Uh, I just want to conclude with some upcoming events. We have, of course, the Brighton Total Solar Eclipse happening at Buckland Park, 1431 Westfall Road on Monday, April 8th from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So do join us for an afternoon of music and fun as we experience this once-in-a-lifetime total solar eclipse as a community. Full details are available online. Also want to announce our Hoops with Heroes event, uh, which will take place at the Brookside Recreation Center. Please use the Winton Road entrance on Friday, April 12th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. This is a free event, but registration is required. So lace up your sneakers, bring the family, and join us for an exciting night shooting hoops with the heroes of the Brighton Police Department. Uh, again, this event is free and open to the public, but please do register online. Our annual Arbor Day celebration will um, take place at First Baptist Church, 175 Allen Creek Road on Saturday, April 27th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. The Brighton community is invited to end the, attend the annual Arbor Day tree planting event. All ages are welcome. We hope to see some of you Boy Scouts there. Um, but children must be accompanied by an adult. Our semi-annual Drug Enforcement Agency Pharmaceutical Take Back event will take place at the Town of Brighton Public Safety Wing parking lot, 2300 Elmwood Avenue on Saturday, April 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And again, our Brighton Clean Sweep will take place at the Brighton Town Hall from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, on Saturday, May 18th, and our semi-annual re electronics recycling and secure document shredding event will take place at the Brighton Highway Department parking lot, 1941 Elmwood Avenue on Saturday, June 1st, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. The next meeting of the Community Services Committee will take place on Wednesday, April 17th, at 9.30 a.m. or immediately following the Finance and Administrative Services Committee meeting at the Brighton Recreation Center. On, and we do ask that you access the Recreation Center through the Winton Road e e entrance. And as always, members of the public are invited and encouraged to attend. Thanks, Robin. I, I do want to just, I, I can't say enough about the work that's uh, that our market um, manager, Sue Gardner-Smith, does um, in, in terms of so many things, the, the, the move to the market location, working with the different communities to make sure we have inclusive uh, events that are reflective of celebratory events and all that. Hats off, Sue Gardner-Smith, you are a rock star. Um, I, I, I wasn't able to attend the committee meeting because I was under the weather. And thank you to the scouts. Yeah. Great to have you here tonight. <laughs> Um, I had seen the information about the pollinator pathway, um, and, and I saw a reference that to qualify, you would have to have 10 um, different species in, uh, I think, five different sort of groups. And, and honestly, I guess my, my hope and my expectation was that the pollinator pathway program is one that it can be as inclusive to as many folks, um, gardeners and non-gardeners, um, or at least heavy duty gar gardeners and non-heavy duty gardeners as, as possible. And I, I wasn't quite sure the rationale behind having 10 different species uh, for example, as opposed to uh, one each of, of maybe or two each of five different species, 
Um, the magic of having 10, um, I, 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 I seemed to me like a burden to anybody but the most dedicated gardeners. What, what Can what I gives? clarify? Um, it, it, surprisingly, um, most yards already have um, 10 or more of the plants that are on the list. Um, the idea is actually to keep the bar pretty low, um, and 10 is a very low bar. Um, let me, let's see, we're looking at this for a moment. So, um, yeah, you could have a red maple in your yard, that counts. You could, and many yards do. You could have, um, uh, let's see, um, some wild columbine, lots of yards. Columbine goes bananas all on its own. You find it popping up everywhere. Um, some um, Solomon seal or um, violets, violets that. Violets, what? I know. Solomon seal I, could bite me, and I would. It, it might. <laughs> no, but for example, violets are are common occurring, commonly occurring in um, in lawns, and for decades, folks have tried to tamp them down, but. If you take the pollinator pathway approach, you may find that you want a little cluster of some of the violets that pop up all on their own. So when um, a resident takes a survey of their yard to see if they, they have any of these plants, and, and there is a link to um, uh, various apps that help you identify for the novice um, pollinator pathway fans out there, um, you'll, you will be truly surprised at how many plants you already have. And then the goal is to, as you learn more, put more in and reduce um, a lot of the non-native plants as you go along. But the bar is is achievable in most yards. Is, is there an umbrella, I mean, is there a national or some organization that, where, where does that? Uh... This was developed in collaboration with the um, Cornell Cooperative Extension. Um, it's very similar to the National Wildlife Federation's um, uh, healthy habitat, um, or I'm sorry, uh, I'm going to fumble on the um, their formal name for it, but a very similar approach to assessing what you have in your, your um, property, ensuring that you are supporting pollinators, and learning how to um, avoid non-native plants that don't support um, pollinators as effectively. And I'm, you know, I mean, I, I, I did, I, believe it or not, I actually knew this, but I think a lot of us would think, oh, butterfly bush, great. Mm -hmm. And butterfly bush is not a native plant. No, and, um, and it is detrimental. It, it, it just, uh, and, and maybe that is, maybe that's an opportunity for us all to learn more. I, 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 I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I, I hope that it's a program that is readily accessible to both green thumbs and brown dish. Absolutely. Thumbs. <laughs> yeah. And it's a program, too, that can, can be um, assessed and modified over time. It, it's not, um, not restrictive. It's not, um, it's not mandated in any way. It's something that we all learn as we go along. Good. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. And I do think that a lot of people assume that they have a monoculture lawn when actually, if you look very closely, you have clover in there. Well, I have you clover have and I have violets. <laughs> you have, um, it, 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 and then, you, you know, if some of us have let our weeding lapse, <laughs> we, we have <laughs> other things growing at the margins of our lawn that we might not realize. Um, yep. And it's only a weed if we decide it's a weed. Yes, exactly. Uh, how about mo moss? Does moss count? Because I have <laughs> more moss than grass in yeah. my yard. Yeah. And that covers nicely in green, moss. and you moss don't have to a, mow it. Is a pollinator? I'm no masking, as I'm. I have. I have yard problems. I have, milk, I have, <laughs> I have milkweed. I have. You know, a lot of things that I have chosen not to remove from the margins of my lawn. That. Um, you, you know, again, I think if we go and look at our lawns, we have probably quite a few of, t of those 10 uh, species. Yeah. You'll hit and that I would, 10. And, and I would just, uh, you know, on a related note, um, we're getting to that time of year. Please, you do not need to put weed killer on your lawn. 
please don't do it the town of brighton has for well over a decade chosen not to use herbicides pesticides on our lawns whether it's the lawns here at town hall or on our parks and certainly not in areas like the brickyard trail um, that simple action will dramatically help um, pollinators uh, and the insects that love them um, but too often I think people just automatically oh I got a call pick a pick the name of your favorite lawn service company none of us need to and I really do encourage us all this is the time of year we're making those decisions let your lawn be let your lawn be Avoid right. the herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides, and avoid chemical fertilizers. And let that lawn be. And let the leaves be for a little bit longer, too. Wait until you've had a couple days above 50 degrees in a row. Not fall spring, but real spring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Finance, Nate. So we do a weekly service of our uh, lawn as well. And that service is Samantha saying, Nate, get outside and mow the lawn. <laughs> that's, that's our survey. I know we have grass. I don't know any other names of plants. <laughs> Maybe uh, my colleague and neighbor can come over and point out what we have. <laughs> you bet. I'll be around the corner soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the FASC committee, the Finance and Administrative Services Committee, last met on Thursday, March 20th. Um, every item that we, we talked about is on today's agenda, so I'll be quick. Um, Actually, I'll be very quick. Every item we discussed is on tonight's agenda. <laughs> so our next meeting is Wednesday, April 3rd um, at 8.30 a.m. right here at Brighton Town Hall, and the public is welcome to attend. Thanks, Nate. Public safety, Chris. Uh, Bill, I reported on our uh, uh, monthly meeting at our last uh, uh, town board meeting. Our next uh, uh, public safety meeting will be April 9th at 8 o'clock uh, in the morning. Thank you. And Christine, Public Works? Similarly, uh, Public Works, we reported out on the last meeting that the last <coughs> town board meeting, the next meeting of the Public Works Committee is April 9th at 9 a.m. Or if public work safety runs long, we'll wait patiently. And I know we're going to have the Safe Streets grant that was moved um, yes. from community services to that committee. And um, we're also going to be talking about um, some uh, um, resident concerns in the Corbett's Glen, specifically the Glen Road area, and I want to make sure that um, uh, all of the neighbors on that end of Glen Road are, are aware that we're going to put that on the Public Works Committee, the next Public Works, April Public Works Committee meeting. Um, we'll be communicating that, not only with the ones who reached out to us, but to but all on the all street. On, mm -hmm. on that end. Of the on street. that end. Thank you. Um, that finishes our committee reports, new business, reading and approval of claims. Nate. Yes, earlier today I reviewed claims totaling $605,441.58. Uh, notable claims include um, a large payment to the American Rock Salt Company. Um, a payment to Insight Agricult uh, Architecture oh, uh, for uh, design and construction phase three of the award-winning farmer's market, and payment for uh, design services for the Chelmsford Lane culvert project and design and the French Road Bridge project. I brought that one up because I spent an hour uh, in New York City at that conference that, that we went to about the differences between a bridge and a culvert. Yes, <laughs> I was in that one. You were in that one too? Well. Yes. <laughs> so I wanted to bring that up. Um, though the claims all appear to be in order and I move for them to be approved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll. Councilmember Werner? Aye. Councilmember Wilt? Aye. Councilmember Corrado? Aye. Councilmember Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Manley? Aye. Uh, why don't you do the next one too, uh, Nate? Yep, the next matter seeks to declare certain fixed assets as surplus or junk for donation to a nonprofit organization or recycling. I move that we adopt the resolution as prepared by the attorney to the town. Second. This is uh, a request from our IT director, uh, Jeremy Lutz. This is something we've discussed in the past. We have, uh, obviously, uh, computer equipment uh, often becomes uh, obsolete, although it may still 
at some level be functional it may not have much if any value in sort of a resale environment so um, we are declaring these items uh, based on the recommendation of our IT director to be um, surplus and junk they will be offered for sale however if they do not receive any offers or if the only offers are nominal in nature um, uh, Jeremy has identified a not-for-profit, uh, the uh, BOCES, Monroe II BOCES in Spencerport that uh, may be able to use some or all of that equipment. So we'll first try to sell it, and if that doesn't work, we will have satisfied our obligations under the state constitution, and we would be able to then make that donation. So that's the, the big picture along, along this one. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll. Council Member oh, Warner. I'm sorry, who seconded that? Robin. Me? Oh, oh, Robin. Robin. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Dan. No. Council Member Werner? Aye. Council Member Wilt? Aye. Council Member Corrado? Aye. Council Member Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Manley? Aye. Uh, Chris? Bill, the next item is to accept a grant award from the Justice Court Administration Program for a standalone door key fob access system in an amount not to exceed $6,874.97 and to amend the budget to reflect that grant. I move that we adapt the resolution before us. Second. Uh, kudos to our uh, uh, Chief Court Clerk, Lisa Pavlovich, for putting this uh, grant uh, request and uh, for identifying a good use for it. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll. Council Member Werner? Aye. Council Member Wilt? Aye. Council Member Corrado? Aye. Council Member Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Manley? Aye. Um, Chris, why don't you do uh, that? Uh, actually, Christine, why don't you do this one since this is a DPW? Certainly. More junk. The, yes, the <laughs> more junk. Um, but it, it served well. Um, the next matter seeks to declare one 2011 ice maker with water filter as junk for disposal. I move that we adopt the resolution before us. Second. This is down at the uh, DPW Highway Ops Center down the street. Any discussion? Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll. Council Member Werner? Aye. Council Member Wilt? Aye. Council Member Corrado? Aye. Council Member Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Mailer? Aye. Um, one more, Christine. The next matter seeks to authorize the supervisor to amend the municipal snow and ice agreement with the New York State Department of Transportation to reflect the additional plowing of state roads by increasing the cost for the 2023-24 winter season by $43,720.12. I move that we adopt the resolution before us. Second. As you know, not only do we plow town streets, but we also plow uh, state and county roads under agreements with the state DOT and the county DOT. Um, this uh, reflects uh, the terms of our contract with the state DOT that depending on amounts of snow and costs and a number of other factors, um, we uh, uh, can and in recent years have received money in addition to the base contract sum. This year that amount is the 43000 and change that was referenced. So that goes as additional revenue. Um, but it is reflective of the additional costs, whether it's fuel, salaries, and the like of performing those plowing services. Anything further? Hearing none, uh, we have a motion. Dan, please call the roll. Council Member Werner? Aye. Council Member Wilt? Aye. Council Member Corrado? Aye. Council Member Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Miller? Aye. Nate, why don't you do the next one? The next matter seeks to authorize a supervisor to enter into an agreement with Pro Construction for the 2024 Sidewalk Repair Program for the calendar year 2024 in an amount not to exceed $419,324.42. I move that we adopt the resolution as prepared by the attorney to the town. Second. Um, 
Pro Construction is the firm that we worked with uh, last year. Um, and under that contract, we have uh, an option to renew for up to three years. Um, however, it's, it's a little, it's not what we lawyers typically think of as a straight option because uh, there's basically the opportunity for the contractor to propose an increase in price. They have done that reflecting, again, talked about it in the plowing context, we have really seen it in a very dramatic way on sidewalk paving um, with a project a couple of years ago that more than doubled from the anticipated cost. So what PRO is uh, recommending or is requesting is a 12% increase, 2024 over 2023. Um, our DPW has reviewed that. You have the letter from uh, Chad Roscoe in the department Basically, what it reflects is that last year when we opened bids for this contract, the second lowest bidder was 25% higher than pro construction. So we are still significantly below what the next highest bidder proposed last year. This will give us an opportunity to have some consistency in the project and there's no reasonable reason to expect we would be saving any money by encouraging in incurring the time spent in going out to bid again. So uh, I think this is a reasonable request. I hate to see a 12% increase. We, uh, this is both, by the way, our sidewalk districts, which is the much larger piece of the program, as well as our town-wide sidewalks on some of our arterial streets. Um, this, this is further in indicative of how challenging it is for us to keep up with our infrastructure needs. And as we go into next year's budget development process, we budgeted for an increase um, this year. I think we're gonna have to look very seriously at additional increases um, because we have to continue to maintain our sidewalks, which are so important to the walkability of this very walkable community. So, but for now, I, I, I concur in the recommendation of the department to uh, exercise this second year. Further discussion? Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll. Councilmember Werner? Aye. Councilmember Wilt? Aye. Councilmember Corrado? Aye. Councilmember Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Mailey? Aye. Robin, the next item. <clears throat> Certainly, the next matter seeks to approve budget amendments in an amount not to exceed $11,000. $385 to pay for the cost of the April 8th total solar eclipse celebration. I move that we adopt the resolution as prepared by the attorney to the town. Second. Have we mentioned there's an eclipse coming? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and the town of Brighton is going all in to celebrate it. Bright on, bright off. Uh, music by a great band aptly named Shine. We're gonna be out in Buckland Park. Uh, I just saw Scott Hetzko today say, ignore any forecasts you see, anything this far out is not reliable. I am still banking on a beautiful, sunny, 65 degree day on April 8th. And I hope everybody in the community will join us. We hope you'll walk, carpool, however you can. Join us out at the park. Um, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Um, we have a motion seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll. Councilmember Werner? Aye. Councilmember Wilt? <coughs> Councilmember Corrado? Aye. Councilmember Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Maley? Aye. Um, and the last matter, um, Nate. The next matter seeks to amend the Town of Brighton's organizational chart and non-represented full-time full-time employee salary and wage schedule to add the title permit clerk and provisionally appoint Casey Pavlovich, I'm sorry, Casey, to said position. I move that we adopt the resolution as prepared by the attorney to the town. Second. Dan. Um, yeah, I think uh, the title accurately fits the job being done. Um, and um, she's been a fantastic employee, and we're looking to make sure she stays with the town a good long time. Thank you. Um, further discussion? 
Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll. Councilmember Werner? Aye. Councilmember Wilt? Aye. Councilmember Carrado? Aye. Councilmember Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Manley? Aye. Um, matters of the supervisor, um, we have the um, January and February 2024 expense and revenue reports. Um, as you know, we um, only really have more detailed uh, reports from the finance director quarterly, so I would simply ask that you, um, that we have a motion to receive and file those reports. From anybody. We move that we receive and file the January and February expense and revenue reports. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, Dan, please call the roll. Councilmember Werner? Aye. Councilmember Wilt? Aye. Councilmember Carrado? Aye. Councilmember Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Manley? Aye. Um, ma uh, further matters of the supervisor, um, a couple of these were touched on earlier. I want to uh, add my kudos to the organizers of the second annual Brickyard Trail Art ex Exhibition. We had over 500 people come through the Buckland House uh, to see that over the last three weekends. Um, it was terrific. Um, Thank you to the Friends of Brickyard Trail who organized the event, especially Peggy Dempsey, Rich Dempsey, Mark Arpeg, Ania Michas, um, who together did such great work hanging uh, the work. Uh, over uh, two dozen artists' works were represented in various media from traditional photography to um, mathematically generated, uh, just a remarkable couple of works of art to three-dimensional works, all of which revolve um, in one way or another around the Brickyard Trail. So since it is my happy place, I certainly enjoyed being able to get there. I also want to specifically thank town historian Mary Jo Lanfear, who spent the better part of those three weekends in the house um, watching her answer questions, you know, she is such a gem. Her knowledge about the Buckland House itself, the history of the Brickyard Trail, um, and just in general, the history of Brighton, people coming in asking her questions, it, it, she is such a resource for the community. So thank you as well, um, Mary Jo. Um, we also mentioned um, uh, our DEI work. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our Chief Diversity Officer, Miriam Moore. Miriam will be um, moderating the Rochester Business Journal's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Summit tomorrow. That is a reflection of the impact that Miriam is having, uh, not only within our organization, but in the broader community and all the experience that she brings to um, the DEI work that is so important to us uh, and um, to the community as a whole. So congratulations, Miriam. Uh, break a leg. Um, early voting is underway. Maybe I'm stealing Dan's thunder, but early voting is underway now um, uh, through Sunday. Primary day itself is next Tuesday, the 2nd. Uh, early voting, you can vote at any of the early voting sites, but in Brighton, and most convenient for most folks, uh, Empire State University is the early voting site. It is very convenient. So uh, if you are a member of the Democratic or Republican parties uh, as an enrolled voter, you can vote between now and Sunday, or you can vote at your, am I right, Sunday? Saturday. Saturday, that's right, because it's Easter. Um, um, uh, and if you vote on election day, you would generally vote at your normal polling place, but some of those have changed. There have been some big changes this year. Um, it didn't steal my thunder because a couple of years ago, the Board of Elections fired all the clerks. Um, so this is their problem now. But um, in the interest of helping our residents, just want to make sure folks know, um, check, you know, you get those postcards or the, the mailings I forget the form they're in now. They've changed over the years. But um, look at them. It's too late now because you've already thrown them in the recycling. But going forward, make sure you look at those because um, 
that does say if there's changes, and there's gonna be changes in the coming years. Um, there's some upcoming changes, just some of the mechanisms along with some of the long overdue changes to the machines. There's new machines coming in the next couple of years. There's new, um, you know, if you've been to early voting, you know that print on demand ballots and things, um, those changes are coming down the pipe and that will inevitably result in some polling place changes. So keep an eye on that. But a big one this year, our single biggest polling site being uh, Brookside is no longer your polling site. Um, so uh, you're gonna be enjoying the Winter Market Building as your new polling location. So make sure you've uh, noted that, um, you know, talked to um, the folks at the board, uh, kind of threw that out there because there's some construction that'll be happening at Brookside and and really it's um, it was good to be in a, thought maybe they'd be in a building that we controlled um, that we know um, we can always make available. Um, so um, I think it's, it's a, it's a wonderful facility um, that, you know, is underutilized still. I know that, you know, we're getting there. It's new, but um, this will be a nice uh, uh, trip for a lot of folks that probably haven't been in there yet. And at least for a couple of days, it will also continue to help our ongoing efforts to address concerns we heard from the neighborhood president today. Traffic in the neighborhood, this will, of course, reduce some of the traffic. Yep, um, in, in three days a year anyway. Yeah. On various election days. And Thanks, Dan. If I may, Dan, um, for the folks who did throw out their um, postcard, they can check their polling site, um, confirm if it's the same or if it changed at monroecounty.gov slash elections. I'm Click the green check my voter information button. BOE tells me they will have signage at Brookside letting the people who inevitably show up there know. Hopefully on both sides. <laughs> it's not gonna be as good as what we've done in the past. Um, but we were not asked for help, so um, we'll see. Thanks. We've already talked about um, the eclipse. I do want to, a lot, we get a lot of questions about glasses. We have eclipse glasses here. There are eclipse glasses in the library. They are free, but we do ask whether you get them here. We're going to have them at Buckland Park um, uh, on Eclipse Day on April 8th. But we want to support the Brighton Food Cupboard. We want to support uh, addressing hunger in our community. So we do ask if you if you come, um, whether or not you need glasses, but especially if you'd like uh, a couple of glasses, two per household, please bring a non-perishable food item. We've got a barrel out here, and we can we'll be taking them at the Buckland Park on Eclipse Day. Last thing I want to note and um, really give. Uh, we are enjoying uh, what is really a pretty remarkable intersection of four holidays, and I want to acknowledge each of them. Last weekend was Purim. Uh, it is one of the most joyful uh, Jewish holidays. It celebrated the foiling of a plot by the evil Haman to eliminate Jews from Persia. Um, and I know there's a well-known bakery on Monroe Avenue. Uh, Hamantashen are not just for Purim, and uh, I, I got a request, in fact, to make sure I got some Hamantashen tomorrow, so you might find me in line at Malik's uh, tomorrow mm. morning. But in any event, Chag Purim Sameach to everyone who celebrated uh, Purim. Um, this is Holy Week, uh, the most important week of the year for most Christians. Palm Sunday was last Sunday, Good Friday this Friday, and of course Easter on Sunday. So many of the Christian faith traditions revolve around those three days, and I wish everyone celebrating Easter a very happy Easter. Um, the third holiday, of course, is Ramadan. Uh, we're in the midst of the month of Ramadan, the most holy month of the Muslim calendar. It's a month of fasting, it's a month of prayer, it's a month of charity for Muslims, and the Muslim community here is very generous um, with their Barach Muslim um, charity and other charitable organizations. I'm looking forward to joining some of my friends in the Turkish community tomorrow night for an iftar dinner to break the fast um, for that day. That is always um, a, just a wonderful event. Uh, Ramadan Mubarak to everyone who is celebrating 
the month of ramadan and finally this past monday was holly which is an important and again very joyful hindu festival not only is it joyful it is colorful it is the it is a spring festival but it is the festival of color it is a celebration of the triumph of good and evil um, and as anybody who has ever participated in holly festivities knows it involves throwing paint or powder or any sorts of very bright and very uh, hard to get off your skin and your clothes color. Um, it's a wonderful holiday um, celebrated this past Monday. Happy Holly to everyone who celebrated that holiday. This is really extraordinary that the four of them are converging the way they are. And they are so important to the community. Each of those holidays is a holiday of respect and importance. Um, let's, let's learn about them, let's share them, and um, there's a lot of enjoyment. There's a lot of really special connections that can be made. Uh, matters of the attorney to the town. John. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, I do not have any matters to report tonight, but I would request an executive session to discuss a matter leading to the appointment of a particular person. Will do. Thank you very much. Matters of the clerk. Dan. Uh, just uh, uh, follow up the third installment of the town and county taxes. Um, the due date uh, being Sunday. Um, mostly we're not open on the weekend um, this year we have the added challenge of not being open on Friday either um, so I've already got signs ready to go on every door to the building um, tomorrow night before people go home um, so the drop box at the rear of the building is always available and because the due date uh, fell on the weekend it goes forward to the next business day so um, payments received or postmarked uh, on Monday will still be considered timely um, I am still, I'm expecting some, some calls Monday morning um, about being closed, but uh, you know, it's on the website and like I said, the doors are covered. So hopefully, you know, it's the best we can do. And of course, everyone watches this meeting. Right. <laughs> universally, so everyone knows. If those calls come in on Monday morning, you'll be able to give them the good news that yes, you are still collecting that third well, installment. And Come on in or bring well, it with, to with them. Well, with apologies, my staff will be handling those and handing that good news because um, I actually will not be in because of the school holiday, but uh, every vacation, I mean, so. Um, apologies to staff for abandoning them on the due date. <laughs> <laughs> well earned. It's Mayor's Dr. McGowan's fault. Well, you, you mentioned people who might not be watching. Well, um, somebody might be watching. It's my dad's birthday today. Uh -huh. And he actually might be watching this, Dan. So he, he'll know about the taxes. And so happy birthday, Dad. Very nice. <laughs> um, if there's nothing else from the board, thank you to our ASL interpreters, Heather and Allie. You do a great work. And I know the scouts enjoyed uh, seeing your work tonight. We talked about it as I met with them beforehand. So thank you very much. Can I have a motion to go into executive session to discuss the employment of a particular person? Well, I move that we go into executive session to discuss the employment of a particular person. Second. Uh, Dan, please call the roll. Councilmember Werner? Aye. Councilmember Wilt? Aye. Councilmember Corrado? Aye. Councilmember Salzman? Aye. Supervisor Maley? Aye. I do not expect that we will be um, coming out into public session after the executive session. So thank you, everybody, for that throng of people that we now know is watching tonight. <laughs> Thank you to everybody that was here in person. Our next town board meeting will be um, Wednesday, April 10th at 7 p.m. right here in this room. Have a great evening, everyone.